Hey everyone, what is happening? So we're still on 5.2 and we're talking about salt. So um, right now, remember that we, uh, we've done the first page in the previous video and remember that a salt is an ionic compound that's formed during um, an acid-base neutralization. So when we, when we put an acid um, with a base, we get a salt and water. All right, and you can see that in the previous video. Now what we're going to be talking about is metal oxides and non-metal oxides. So metal reacts with oxygen to form oxides. An oxide is a chemical compound that contains at least one oxygen atom along with one or more other elements. So let's check this out. We've got Na2O or sodium oxide, calcium oxide, lithium oxide, aluminum oxide, sulfur oxide, and then nitrogen oxide. We have metal oxides contain a metal with oxygen and non-metal oxides contain a non-metal and oxygen. So if we have we have a metal right here, so this is a metal, this is a metal, this is a metal, and this is a metal, and our non-metal oxides are going to be over here and we just look on our periodic table of elements. So when we have non-metals, they're going to just be from the right hand side and they connect or they combine with oxygen and anything else is going to give us a metal oxide. All right. So there's some special things that happen when we mix a metal oxide in water. They dissolve and we get a basic solution. Now when we mix a non-metal oxide in water, you get an acidic solution. So for example, we've got sodium oxide plus water and we get NaOH. You'll notice my sodium went right there. I've got my oxygen and my other oxygen and then we have to balance and finally we have my H. Next we've got a non-metal oxide and you'll notice that it produces an acid because it's got an excess number of H plus ions and if you go back to the top there for NaOH it's got OH negative ions. So nonmetal oxides are often produced when fuels such as gasoline burn. When they combine in the Earth's atmosphere, they form acids. All right. So this is how acid rain forms. Um, the water is going to be uh, dissolves um, a nonmetal oxide, and then it falls down, and we get acid on the rocks or buildings and other structures made out of um, limestone. So let's practice writing a couple equations. So we've got CO2 plus H2O, and we get H2CO3. You'll notice that all my H's get taken care of, all my C's and my O's, I had one here, or I had two there, and one here, and now I have three there. So let's go ahead and balance. One C, one C, two O's, three O's, oh, one O there. So our O's are balanced and our H's are balanced, this is balanced, all right? And this is acidic because we had a non-metal oxide right here. Next, we've got CaO plus water, and this is a metal oxide, so we're gonna go CaOH, and we've gotta put a two down there because we had Ca2 plus and OH negative because it was dissolved in water. And now we're going to go and balance this equation. Let's see. We've got 1Ca, 1Ca. We've got two O's. Oh, we've got two O's here, and we've got two H's. This is balanced. And this is going to be basic because we have an OH. We've got NO3 plus H2O, and because this is a non-metal oxide, we're going to get an acidic solution, and we get H2NO4. We had two H's and we had three O's plus one more O, we get four, and this is balanced. All right. Next we've got acids and metals. Now we gotta go back to the lab that we did the other day with all those spot plates, and many acids are able to react with metals to form hydrogen gas. And if you remember back from our lab that we did on Wednesday, um, hydrogen gas was produced when we put magnesium strips in that acid. We got little bubbles and here's the reaction that took place. We had hydrochloric acid plus magnesium and we got magnesium chloride plus hydrogen gas and that was given off. And you'll notice we've got 
half brinkle right there. So it's a diatomic. Next we've got sulfuric acid. Um, it was an ick because it was an eight. Um, and so we mix it and it's aqueous. So we mix it with aluminum and we get aluminum sulfate and we get hydrogen gas. So let's try a few examples here. We've got hydrochloric acid plus zinc and our zinc is going to combine with our chlorine and we're going to get hydrogen and it's got to be H2 because it's part of Hofbrinkel and then we're going to balance so we've got 1H, 2Hs. We've got to put a 2 right here and next we've got a 2 in front of the zinc because we've got to balance out those chlorines and then we have to put a 2 in front of there and it's all balanced. Next we've got um, hydrobromic acid plus aluminum and we're going to get aluminum bromide plus hydrogen and we're going to balance these bad boys and now we're going to balance these so this one's a little more complicated so we're going to put H, Br and Al and we're going to balance these using the longer method so we've got 1H, 2Hs, 1Br, 3Brs, 1Al and 2Als so now that we've got these all balanced so now that we've got these all uh, written out with a number of ions, we're actually we're going to go through and balance these bad boys out. Okay, so how many hydrogens do we have out front? Well, we have two here and one here, so we're going to multiply by two, multiply by two, and then we have to do our BRs. Well, we've got three BRs right here, so we need to multiply by two, and this one by three, this one by three. And now we got to rebalance our hydrogens. So we've got 3 times 1 times 2 is 6. So we're going to have to multiply by 3 over here. And next we've got to do our aluminums. So we've got 4 aluminums and we have to multiply by 4 over here. So all together we have 6, 4, 2, and 3. All right. Now finally we have H2SO4 plus Ca or calcium and we're gonna get CaSO4 plus H2 and if we look at this we've got two H's, two H's, one, uh, one SO4, one SO4 and one Ca this is already balanced. So what we have is we've got our acids and metals and they always produce hydrogen alright so when you see a an acid and a metal um, you've got to make sure that we find or that we get a new compound and hydrogen. Now moving on we've got acids and carbonates. So much of the carbon dioxide um, on the earth is trapped in rocks such as um, limestone, domalite, and calcite. So these all contain carbonate ions. Now when carbonate rocks react with water, they with acids, sorry, when carbonate rocks react with acids, they help neutralize the acid. So this is one way that the earth helps protect itself from acid rain. However, the earth's ability to protect itself is limited. The amount of emissions we put in and the amount of acid rain that we um, put in the atmosphere and on the rocks is really bad. So um, it actually breaks down a lot of rocks. Now, when acid reacts with carbonate, water and carbon dioxide are always formed. For example, we've got H2SO4 plus calcium carbonate. We get calcium sulfate plus water plus CO2. We're going to be talking more about this in class. Have a good rest of the day.